Two Gospels, Why Paul, Part 7 We last left off with Paul making a demonstration before both the false brothers who were seeking to bring hearers of Paul's message under bondage and Peter with the Jerusalem church leadership. Paul noted that he brought Titus, an uncircumcised Gentile who was saved under Paul's gospel message and took a stand when the false brothers would have had it otherwise that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. And the you of which he speaks are the Galatian believers, and all others like them. Continuing today, but of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it mocketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person for they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. Galatians 2, verses 6 to 8. Let's break this down. Speaking of Peter, the balance of the remnant of the twelve, and other Jerusalem church leadership, Paul describes them as, these who seem to be somewhat, a somewhat critical description. Once again, the student of the word will wonder why. Why would Paul describe these as such before the audience of this letter, the Galatian believers in us? For as relates to the Jerusalem church, these were the leadership, and as to those whom Christ himself had trained, Peter was the appointed leader with specific loosing binding authority, Matthew 16 verses 18 to 19. The answer is that Paul was about to draw the line that Christ himself had instructed be drawn. He was going to demonstrate the power of the gospel of grace which he had been instructed to preach among the Gentiles. Make no mistake, the twelve under Peter's leadership had likewise received instruction to preach a specific message as well. But something had changed and Paul was the revelator and Christ's leader of that change. For Paul notes that the leadership of the Jerusalem church clearly saw something they weren't expecting, a change, namely, they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. Most never even noticed these two gospels which are mentioned here, but clearly there was a purpose in this statement, as coming to this conclusion on the part of the leadership of the Jerusalem church was no small thing. Remember Christ's last words to his apostles were ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Acts 1 verse 8. Clearly under Peter's leadership this instruction was that they first be witnesses to Jerusalem Judea the leadership and faithful of Israel and then in Samaria Jews who had intermarried with Gentiles and then to the uttermost parts namely all Gentile nations. Now Peter and the rest of the twelve are seeing that instead of them going to Gentiles, the Lord Jesus Christ has removed that part of their commission and given it to Paul in a manner that was totally unexpected. Example not the prophesied path. Also, it was likely, by the time the Jerusalem council was complete, the kingdom apostles and the little flock had come to understand that Israel had been concluded in unbelief Romans 11 verse 32, along with the Gentiles. As a result, the kingdom gospel had, for a time, become the another gospel, which is not another. Galatians 1 verses 6 to 7. Once again, the realization listed above is a game changer. And we'll see even more of the why of this when we conclude our Why Paul series in our next installment.